The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books that come together to tell one story. An incredible about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Revelation, chapters 21 and 22. John squinted against the blinding glare of the afternoon sun. Just a short distance away, frothy waves crashed against craggy rocks and foamed over white sands. The island of Patmos was stunning, surrounded by brilliant blue sea and sky. The most beautiful prison on earth. Though he wasn't chained up, John was in jail. The Roman emperor, unable to stop John from preaching about Jesus, had exiled him to this prison colony, and there was no way off the island. John was now a very old man, spending the rest of his life with a handful of criminals. Well, they need to hear about Jesus as much as anybody else. John settled into a shallow cave on shore to take shelter from the heat. He closed his eyes. I've seen so much. John had lived longer than any of Jesus' other disciples. He had seen the early church grow as the story of Jesus spread fast and bright as wildfire. But he had also seen terrible things happen to those who believed in Jesus. Many of them had even died for just talking about Jesus. But that hasn't stopped people hearing about Jesus. It was true. More people than ever were following Jesus. God's story was traveling from one end of the earth to the other, just as Jesus said. I wonder why I've been allowed to live this long. In the cool of the shallow cave, John began to relax. His head was nodding when a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Write on a scroll what you see. John blinked. Was he awake or dreaming? Wait, what? I don't see. Oh. Turning, John saw Jesus himself, his eyes blazing with intensity. Do not be afraid. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. Write about what is happening now and what will happen later. John's mind worked fast, trying to interpret what was happening. It appeared that God was showing him an image of what was going to happen in the future, and he wanted John to write them down and share them with others. Yes, Lord. Um, uh, let me find a scroll and uh, take a few notes. Here. And a quill. John watched, amazed, as God showed him many things that were coming. Some were wonderful, some were terrible, and some were mysterious. Whew. After the vision ended, John began a letter to several of the new churches. I, John, am writing this. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' royal family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. John explained all of the strange and amazing things he had seen. Some of it made him tremble. Some of it he didn't even understand yet. But he couldn't wait to write about what he had witnessed during the last part of the vision. <laughs> the ending. <laughs> That's the best thing. God had shown John how the story will turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. He carefully recalled all of the incredible things he had seen. Words can't describe how amazing it will be. I'll try, but no one's going to really get it until they see it for themselves. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John remembered the words that Jesus had spoken on earth right before his death and return to life. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. What I saw, it's the special place Jesus is making for each one of us. A place where we will never be apart from God. John then focused on the next scene from his vision. He had seen a great white throne. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, now God makes his home with people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. John paused as he stared at his words on the page. All of these terrible things we've seen, people sick and hurt, being mocked and put in jail, all of it will be made right. And something else stood out to John. Light. 
Oh, there was so much light. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light, and the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Its gates will never be shut, because there will be no night there. The place John had seen wasn't just filled with light. It was beautiful, too. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. Oh, it was as clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. Once again, John lifted his pen from the page. It just seemed impossible to capture the total glory of what he had seen with tiny black marks on a scroll. He tried one more time. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. John felt himself grinning. He could say one thing for sure. No one would be bored. <laughs> At last, he and everyone else who believes in God would be able to live out what they were created to do, fully and completely, without any sin or frustration or weariness getting in their way. It was time for John to wrap up his letter. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Now, John didn't know exactly when the things God had shown him would take place, and neither do we. But we can be certain of this. We can keep going no matter what happens, because God will make everything right in the end.